Is any of the makeup on your face today permanent makeup or no? Um, I have a darker lipstick on. Um, I usually recommend that people do something natural um, because you can always add additional makeup to it. But I do have my eyeliner, upper and lower eyeliner tattooed and my, my brows are tattooed and there's no additional makeup on there. But I do have lipstick on and I have fake eyelashes on today. <laughs> This is the plaintiff, Gia Gianna. She says she got her lips tattooed by the defendant and the woman damaged her bridge. Now she has major dental problems. It's clear as day the defendant doesn't know what she's doing. And she's here seeking the $6,000 she now needs to get her teeth fixed. This is the defendant, Lynn Rush. She says she doesn't even go near someone's teeth when she does a lip tattoo. This woman's trying to blame her for her bad teeth and expects her to shell out six grand? Come on. She's accused of causing a dental dilemma. The defendant has filed a counter suit for $1,000 for lost wages. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. The People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is now presiding. Litigants are sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Gianni, you are suing Ms. Rush for the return of uh, the money you paid her for lip tattooing, and also, according to you, she damaged your bridge in your dental work, and you want her to pay $6,000 for that. Tell me what happened here. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I went on November 2nd, and um, I asked her about uh, permanent lip uh, makeup, and she supposedly uh, gave me uh, full lip uh, permanent makeup. Uh, it was first procedure, and uh, she started my pr procedure on my lips, and um, she told me I have to have two more uh, touch-ups. I said, okay, um, and I paid her $625 and plus $15. Okay, so, so the idea is that you would go three times in order to complete the process, and she was going to be tattooing lip color on your lips um and how long does that can i ask you because this is fascinating to me ms rush how long does tattooed lip color last after all of the applications are finished um, which is about a three-month process before the actual application is finished most people can get about a year or so before they need a color boost um, permanent makeup a lot of times is dependent on your body chemistry um, if you eat spicy foods, you know, depending on where you apply the makeup, like on the brows or on the eyes, there's always different factors that go into how long it lasts after it's complete. Okay. All right. So Ms. Gianni, um, what happened when you went to your first appointment? Yes. Um, I went to my first appointment and, uh, she asked me if I'm taking any medications. I told her, um, yes, I am taking, uh, aspirin, 81 milligram of aspirin. She said, that's fine. It's not a problem. Um, and, uh, she started uh, the procedure and she numbed my lips and uh, she started the procedure. During the procedure, um, she was pushing. I didn't feel any pain, but I was feeling a uh, pressure. She was keeping ask she was asking me um, if I'm okay, if I have any pain. I said, I feel pressure. And she kept put more numbing cream and put more and more adding and stuff. Um, and just feel pressure. I just feel pressure. So, and during the procedure, Your Honor, um, her tool was stopped working. Like it, it didn't work. She was stopping and pushing again and pressing again and again. So um, uh, she said, oh, I'm sorry. Something wrong with my tool. And I'm like, okay. So when procedure was done and she has a photo, my photo before, procedure and after procedure. She does have that. I don't have any photos. So, um, and she um, took my pictures and my uh, lips was very red, red. And I said, okay, color is fine. It's, it's red and it looks, seems like it's bigger and stuff. She said, well, yeah, it's going to be 
so swelling and stuff and um next day you're gonna wake up you will see like they are very big and red and it's fine it's normal i'm like okay your honor i had uh, my eyebrow tattoos 15 years ago and i had one touch up during these 15 years nothing else anymore 15 years ago my eyebrows and you can see it's still there so have you ever had your lips tattooed never this is my first time and I know she had explained to you though she had explained to you that it takes three sessions did you go to all three sessions no, you went to no, all three Honor. sessions I know no I did so why didn't you I did so she told me that um <clears throat> you have to wait 28 days until color will appear when I call her three days after I woke up next day your honor like I told you there is no color really redness left like no color and um no swelling anything like she said I'm like well maybe that's my body whatever so three days after procedure I called her I said I am sorry I am so like kind of worried and stuff there is no it's peeling off everything so not no really color i don't see she said well okay it's fine you will see color after 28 days i'm like okay and i um was talking to my friends my family members they said wait a minute where is your tattoo and stuff i'm like well i don't know she said this is gonna appear color gonna be and then it was very dark red after procedure first day um, they say, well, it's not normal. You don't have any evidence of tattoo, not even one line on your lips. Where is your tattoo? Like, I'm like, well, she said it's going to appear in 28 days. So it's okay. So time will pass and I will call around and ask people and have some consultation about that. They say, well, she did something wrong. Maybe her um, makeup she was using is wrong or her tool or something. It's not how it's supposed to Who be. Who said that? Who said I that? I did call. I did call uh, different salons and ask questions. I'm like, can you please tell me uh, if it's normal or not? Because I was worried already. Like, um, they say no, it's not normal. Uh, it's supposed to be something. Supposed what were you to be worried normal. about? Why didn't you just wait until the 28 days? Why didn't you? What happened well, on day 28? Okay, nothing until today. It's over two months now, Your Honor, nothing. Only. Right, but you never went back for the other two touch-ups that you were supposed to do. Can you explain to me, Ms. Rush, how does this procedure work? Anytime um, someone calls me and wants to have a lip application, I do explain to them, even before I book an appointment, that it's going to take three sessions. I've been doing permanent makeup for almost six years um, and have been doing lips for five of those six years. And some people have different colors in their lips where maybe their lips are dark and things need to be neutralized. So my general practice is to do three sessions because I know at that point I can adjust the color as I need to. So the first time I talk to people, I tell them that you have to have a four week heal healing period between each application. So I want them to commit to all three applications before you know I would even agree to do one, which with Miss Gianni, that, that's what I did. So when you do a lip application, I explain to them the first day, some people get swollen, um, some more than others. That just kind of depends on your particular body chemistry. So part of the appointment would be explaining in detail. And I did spend almost 45 minutes with Ms. Gianni explaining what's going to happen to them, um, the aftercare part of it. Um, you're swollen the first day. The next day, the swelling goes down pretty pretty much within three days, they get very, very chapped. I do provide them with ointment to use. I tell them to use that ointment generously. Um, they get very flaky. Um, the color at that point is starting to kind of flake off with the flakes. Um, and that's because your body is trying to fight this um, substance that I've put into the body. We do not use tattoo ink. So there's a big difference between eyebrows and lips. Um, a lot of artists will use tattoo ink in the brows, which in my opinion, um, and as far as industry opinion, is not a good idea because they get very cool, very gray, very purple as they age. They'll stay there forever, but they just turn a very funny color that isn't very desirable. So with lips, you have to be very skilled um, in order to get the color theory correct for the color that the client wants. Do you have to be licensed um, to do what you do? Yes. 
Okay, and uh, is any of the makeup on your face today permanent makeup or no? Um, I have darker lipstick on. Um, I usually recommend that people do something natural um, because you can always add additional makeup to it. But I do have my eyeliner, upper and lower eyeliner tattooed, and my, my brows are tattooed, and there's no additional makeup on there. But I do have lipstick on, and I have fake eyelashes on today. <laughs> So. Okay. All right. All right. No, I was just yeah. curious if any of it was, um, if I'm seeing the results. Yeah, my whole face is that. All right. So she tells you, um, she calls you and she says, there's no lip color. And what's your response to her? I told you so. The first, <laughs> when she called me um, at about day three and said there was no color, I said, don't worry. It's totally normal. We had gone over this in the appointment as far as what's going to happen. Um, it is going to flake off. And then as your body repairs itself, it comes back around the 28 day period. And there's a term for it. They call it blooming. Um, everybody's different. Some people will see color at two weeks. Some people can see color at three weeks. But I always ask my clients when they come back in for additional um, sessions when they saw it. And I would say most of my clients say it's very weird. It comes back like the week of my touch up appointment and it comes back very light. Um, and then that's why you do subsequent applications after that. Ms. Gianni, did you ever go online and do any research about lip tattooing to see if Ms. Rush was making up the things she was saying or if there's actually that is the process? Not internet, Your Honor. I was calling prior to call her. I was calling. Yeah, maybe, uh, yeah but places. except for that, I would trust the uh, articles uh, on the internet more than your friends because I did. I went on the internet and she's not making this stuff up. This is, there's a concept called blooming. This is exactly how it's supposed to happen. So I, I, I don't get it. But let's talk about your dental work because the brunt of your, most of your lawsuit is about $6,000 for dental work. What happened there? Yes, um, like a couple of days after procedure, I felt like something is moving, like it's kind of like loose in my mouth. That's why when uh, my bridge was broken, like it's, it's, um, it fell, and then on the floor, it's, it's, I will show you, Your Honor, if, if I can, please. Um, sure. So I, I couldn't, I can't put it back. I went to my doctor. It's, uh, it's supposed to be a whole piece, but it's, it's broken. They cannot fix it because she was pushing a lot on the top. It's his front teeth. And um, she told me she spent half a day Except with for you, me. did you ever tell her that the that she broke your bridge? Did you ever tell her that? No, when she totally refused. So to you have you had my... numerous discussions with her, and you never bring up the bridge until she tells you, "I'm not refunding your money," and you decide to go to court, and then you add the bridge. What evidence do you have that she broke your bridge? Does your because I looked at your dental records, I don't see the dentist saying that. So what's your proof that she broke? the bridge well it's happened like a couple of days after the procedure i feel like it's loose and then uh, like following week it's failed so um All right I but was... you're gonna have a hard time convincing me that that's her fault when even you didn't bring it up with her because you didn't think that was her fault i mean if you know you're not going to argue with her over 640 if she cost you six thousand you're go if you were convinced that she had broken your bridge you would have been telling her about the bridge when was the first time you heard about the bridge complaint ms rush about two months later from the initial appointment. Okay. You have a counterclaim against her for $1,000 for what? My main, my part of my counterclaim is I had to speak with my attorney. Um, so I do have an attorney bill. Um, initially, because she's filed in small claims court, um, I did have a court date scheduled um, in my state. So I did have two clients that particular day that I, re like I canceled their appointments and they did not reschedule. So those were lost appointments. Um, my main concern for my countersuit is that I, I have a, a five-star Google rating. I have a perfect reputation. I do not want her to be able to tarnish my reputation um, because I've worked very hard um, to keep myself, um, you know, well, five-star okay, on the internet. Has she tarnished your reputation? Did she put a negative review? She hasn't even done that, right? Not and she's yet, also no. entitled to do, like, she, it's her opinion. She's entitled to have an opinion. And then what you normally see is a response on the part of the vendor that says, you know, this is what happened. Here's my response. I'm sorry that you're unhappy. And whenever I'm looking at reviews, you can kind of tell when someone is out in left field and when, you know, and there's consistency otherwise, you know, so it's, 
but you're you're kind of you're really jumping the gun because you're um, just like she was because you're anticipating that something's going to happen. You want to get paid for your repair of a damage that hasn't occurred. And let me just say that's how the cookie crumbles in business. That there are reviews and people get to say what they want. They don't get to lie, but they get to say what they want. You get to respond. So um, I understand your lost income claim, but that's also kind of how the cookie crumbles. When everyone has access to the courts, she thinks she's right. And so she has a right to come to court and sue you. And imagine if you were a brain surgeon and today cost you $30,000, you couldn't then counterclaim $30,000. These aren't compensable expenses. On your counterclaim, zero. Ms. Gianni, you are suing her for a bridge and you don't have a stitch of evidence that she broke your bridge. Your dentist doesn't say that. It's just, oh, it happened a few days later. No. You are also suing her for the entire amount back for the tattoo services. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with returning any of it. Um, because once a case gets to court, my job is to decide who is breaching the contract. Okay? So you had actually offered her some money back, didn't you? Okay, I offered her $300 for the two sessions that she um, did not want to come to. Wow. You should have taken her up on that. Because you know how much you're going to get here today, Ms. Gianni? If I decide that you're the one who breached the contract because she fully explained to you exactly what was entailed and you were too impatient and you knew better than her, the professional and your friends said it was worthless and some receptionist on a telephone with a company you have no association with and is a competitor says her job is worthless without seeing it, if you felt you knew better and didn't want to go back, it's your body, don't go back, but don't cry later and ask for your money back. Because in court, you're going to get zero. And my verdict is for the defendant. Ms. Gianni, what do you think about the, what the judge just told you? You can't get anything from the court. That's what happened. And what can I say? It's not fair to me. I have no evidence or when even after one session nothing on my lips period nothing and i decided if she's not going to return me my my 600 some dollars how is she going to return my uh damage for my bridge that's why i didn't tell her nothing she totally refused to pay me anything period why am i supposed to tell her anything about my bridge well i'm sorry but the judge yeah. decided you did not prove that she damaged your bridge that's what it comes down to ms rush how about you? Do you think you lost enough business? I mean, you couldn't prove that either to the judge. So you ended up with nothing. I, What's your reaction? I am not concerned about the countersuit. Um, I was more concerned about the fact that I, I have not been accused of this previously. I was very shocked about the broken bridge accusation. It would be I've spoken to dentists. It's, it would be next to impossible for me to break a bridge in someone's mouth as gentle as I work. Um, so I feel like justice was served here today. Um, I tried to work with her. I tried to explain to her. We did communicate at length, and she didn't really want to talk to me about it. So I'm, I'm happy with the result. Um, I do feel like justice was served. All right. Well, very good. Okay. Well, that'll do it for this case. Before this case, I had never heard of lip tattooing. Just one more thing in the catalog of painful and complicated things that women endure for beauty. It's like, you know, you got the high heels, you got the lip tattoos, it's you so got unfair. eyebrow tattoos. You're lucky if your your boyfriend or your husband's going to put on clean socks or underwear. Yeah, it's matching like, socks. I consider it successful right. if the socks are matching. So, uh, certainly when you engage in a contract with somebody and it's a three-step process, you don't get to bail after step number one and then come into court and say, hey, uh, pay me back. I mean, you're the yeah. one who breached, yeah. clearly. It's you get to bail. You just don't get to bail and come to court and ask for the right. money. It's your body. Yeah. Don't do it if you don't want to. But don't exactly. cry about it. She, she explained it it's so sort well of to her. reminded me of uh, my brother one time did a bungee jump off of a you know, 10 or 15-story crane. And he said there was a big sign when you got there that said, you're paying for the ride up in the <laughs> elevator. And when the elevator gets to the top, if you change your mind, you're out of luck. You know, you're, you, we're keeping your money. And a lot of people just took the ride up, took one look over the side and said, oh, well, that's not for me. Carlo wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, when someone is ordered to pay in a lawsuit, 
How long do they have to pay, and do they have to pay all at once? Well, usually, there is some kind of a limitation here where you have to pay within 30 days, oftentimes after a judgment. And if you don't, they can start enforcing the judgment and garnishing your wages. As for a payment schedule, that's something you should probably ask the judge as part of the judgment, because when you have a judgment against you, you do have to pay in a lump sum. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case inside the courtroom. These are the plaintiffs. Yvonne and Raymond Branch. Yvonne says their neighbor, the defendant, is a stubborn man who refuses to admit his tree roots are destroying their property. Since he isn't very neighborly because he refuses to pay for their driveway repairs and brick wall, they're not going to be very neighborly either, and they're suing him for the $3,500 they're owed. This is the defendant, Freddie Fry. He says he's not obligated to pay for the cracks in the plaintiff's driveway because they disturbed his sycamore tree, which is about 60 feet high. Everyone in the neighborhood has to deal with the cracks because the sycamore trees are so prevalent and the plaintiffs should just mind their own business. He's accused of cracking up a neighbor. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiffs say their stubborn neighbor's tree uh, has ruined their property with encroaching roots, and the guy will not fess up. The defendant says his sycamore tree is a protected species, and his hands are tied. It's the case of we're sick of your sycamore. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Branch, uh, you are suing your next-door neighbor, Mr. Frey, for $3,500 in damages because his tree has roots that have been disturbing both your driveway and a brick wall. Talk to me and tell me, how long have you lived there? Uh, I've lived here 30 plus years, uh, maybe 35 and how long, years. And how long have you Before lived there, Mr. Frey? I moved there in 1994. Okay, so you guys have known each other for a long time. I've, have you been friendly during that time or just kind of high by in the driveway? No, we've been friendly until okay. this incident for well, the most part. So what happened here? Well, how it all got started is, um, Your Honor, is um, my driveway was lifting up and uh, I was tripping on it. And when the ki my grandkids come over, they were tripping on it also. So I had part of the driveway repair where I walked into my garage because it, it was a hazard. So I repaired that and, uh, you know, no problem. And then the, my brick wall, I didn't realize it was my brick wall at the time, but the brick wall was cracking and another part of my driveway was lifting. So one day I saw Eddie in the backyard and so I mentioned to him about the brick wall and uh, we both agreed that, yes, it was a good idea to get the brick wall repaired. So we both started getting estimates. So I had a guy coming to give me one last estimate. And so I asked Eddie if he wanted to meet with uh, me and the guy to, you know, see what the estimate was going to be. He said he was eating breakfast. I said, okay. Then uh, the guy came and left, and I saw Eddie in the front yard. And then I said, Eddie, oh, the guy came, and I shared with him, you know, what the uh, price was and everything for, to repair the brick wall. And at that point, that's when Eddie, he just was a, like about face. He was a different person. He said, I can't afford to fix this brick wall right now. I have uh, my wife's family is going through this and that and the other, you know, a lot of different things that he named that was going on in his family. So I said, okay. But then I said, well, this price is really good and it's very reasonable. He said, I can't do it right now. He started getting really loud telling me, you know, he cannot do it. So then my husband heard him hollering at me. So he came outside and he said, what's going on? What's going on? And then he and Eddie started having words. And then my husband just mentioned to him, we don't have to handle this like this. We could take this to court. And then Eddie said, I got two lawyers. You take it to court. I got two lawyers. So then I kind of pushed my husband back in the house. And then I said, you know, we, we're not going to do, you know, we're not going to go there. You know, we, we don't want to go there. So anyway, so like the next day I text Eddie, I said, Eddie, we've been friends for a long time, you know, and we're friendly neighbors and we've been good neighbors with no problem. 
I said, but uh, your tree is damaging the brick wall. I didn't realize it was a brick wall, my brick wall at the time. I said, it's damaging the brick wall and it's my uh, other parts of my driveway is being damaged and I already repaired part of it. And you know, I didn't mention that to him. And then so um, he said, well, you know, now is uh, not a good time. Now it's not a good time. I said, oh, okay, okay. So I decided, okay, he said, now, I said, can you let me know when is a good time? Do you have a date or something or any idea? I texted him. He said, um, well, it's going to be a while. I don't know. It's, go it's not that important to me. That's not my first priority. I said, well, in the meantime, it's damaging my property. It's been damaging my property for a while. He said, it's not important to me. So then I said, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get this wall fixed, you know? So then I called my guy and asked him if he could fix it. And so he told me, yes, he could. So then um, he gave me a date that he could start. And so I text Eddie and told him that the guy was going to come and repair the wall. And so I just wanted to give him a heads up that it's going to be repaired. And that's when he said, don't you touch my wall. That's my wall. And you better not okay. touch it. That's my brick wall. If you touch it, okay, everybody, every okay, hold on one second, and I want to see some pictures here. So here is a picture of the driveway, correct? Before you repaired it, yes, that part, just that part. That well, first he told me to prove it, so I had to have somebody come out and dig up the roots and prove that the roots was coming over, damaging the driveway, because he told me that his roots was not damaging. Okay, the so this is a brick wall before the repair, correct? That is correct. All right. And I guess somebody had a pick there to try to see what was going on down there. Yeah. There's the crack in the brick wall. Okay. And then this is the driveway cracks before the repair, correct? Yes. Correct. All right. Now, Mr. Frey, talk to me. Yes, Your Honor. Well, one thing I cannot say is that is, that is the tree, but the, the crack in the wall has been there she says since 2015, but the crack in the wall has been there prior with the other owner. I talked to to the prior owner I bought the house from. The tree was planted planted in 1945. It's a sycamores, oaks are protected in the state of California, so it's totally illegal to cut the roots without having what they call an otomus or something like that. Come and give you the okay. So I saw the crack in the wall. But at the time, I was sending money to Pensacola, Florida, due to my niece had hurricane had hit her house, destroyed her house, and then it moved into Louisiana. So the crack in the wall was there when I moved in 1994, and I says, well, what's more important, helping my family in Louisiana or giving her some money for a wall? That wall has been that way, and I tried to... It started with me putting two bricks on top of it, and the estimate she asked came from one estimate that a guy was cutting a palm tree in her yard, Juan. Juan has, has trimmed trees, did a lot of construction work. So we both asked Juan what would be the cost of the wall. He says, well, at least 2000 for the wall and another 1000 to take the brick to a dump, you know, a, a, a dump yard. He said, so it cost me $3,000. So I left it at that. And then later on, within a few days, Yvonne said she wanted a new wall. And I said, well, right now, I live on a pension and Social Security. And so when I sent money to my family in Louisiana, it was money that, you know, you don't save too much out. I retired in 19, I mean, 2004. I'm living off the same stuff. So when I send money to my family, that was more important to any wall that it has a crack in it. And she's known it's been a crack. And that wall, the, the roots of those trees, they're all protected. So in order for her to trim the, the roots, she needed to have uh, the, somebody from L.A. County come out and, you know, and authorize the trimming of the roots, which she did. Now, she does the driveway. All right, let me, I, I okay, think. Mr. Frey, hold, stop a second. Let's put a pin in this one moment, and let me ask you, um, Ms. Branch, what did you end up doing? Because you didn't want to wait until he could afford it. You decided to do right. it on your own, and then you're in court 
asking for a judgment against him. That means that you have to prove in court that he has a legal liability to do it. So now what I'd like to ask you is, what, did you, what work did you end up doing and how, because my understanding is you ended up deciding to make the wall taller and bigger and, you know, it was a $10,000 okay. project. This is what happened. Once Eddie told me that he wasn't able to take care of the wall, I was planning on taking care of the wall, and then that's when he said that was his wall, so I got a surveyor. I had to get a surveyor come out and survey the wall to make sure it was mine, and then, uh, so that cost me more money, so I decided to repair the wall. So by repairing the wall... Wait, you know, what did your survey middle... discover? That, that it's all your... your just, uh... It's my wall. It was my wall. Oh, it was my so wall, then, because when you guys are going to start doing work on the wall, he says, don't touch my wall, and right, you apparently exactly. had some solar stuff on the wall, and you were mad, and so, and, and you get a survey that says it's your wall. Then why does he have to pay exactly. to fix it if it's your wall? Well, because the damage uh, from the tree was damaging okay, the wall. Okay, that's it. That's, okay. And, and so it's all, it's not that he has a legal responsibility to maintain your wall. It's because of the tree roots. That's your that's yeah. your legal basis. Okay. Now, Mr. Frey, what say you to that? Well, uh, the driveway itself, we live on what we call the Inglewood Redondo Beach Fault. So I did a survey of a, of the block on Fairview. I surveyed thirty two houses. I took pictures of all these driveways. There are driveways that are much worse than theirs because even though they have no tree, they have no tree within two or three houses. So, you know, like I even cross, I talked to some of the neighbors. That, there you're looking at a guy who just bought a $1.1 million house. That was his driveway. He has no trees. Now, that's my side up there. My solar is all at the bottom there. Uh, all those were damaged. Uh, there's an electrical thing that was running to my garage that came down, you know, so uh, I all I said was I was outside. I said, hey, the wall fell in my yard while they were, they were splitting it. And even the guy that was originally with her told her that if you split the wall and take it out, it's going to be a problem because there's no rebar. If you don't have any rebar in the walls, the walls are going to fall. Okay, and that's what happened. Okay, this is a video, so you, Ms. Branch, you submitted a video I'd like to see, so Mr. Frey, uh, stop talking for one moment, let me see this video. See how they tried to cut a piece of a section of the wall out? They couldn't do that. It was, she was told the same day that Juan was there, he said she can't cut that split out. So she did it upon her own to cut the split out of the wall. And even the guys who were cutting it, they laughed about it too. Now, if you see those pipes going up, that's rebar. That's what they're putting in the new stuff. Your Honor, I asked him, I sent him a letter, put it in his mailbox, and the, the uh, construction guy went and spoke with Eddie before the work was done because I didn't ask him. No, Eddie he did done. not. And Eddie, no, everybody, stop. everybody stop. Everybody stop. Everybody stop. Everyone stop. Let me explain a couple things. You are not my first tree case, and Quite unfortunately, you will not be my last. Let me explain to you what the law is on trees. From hell until heaven, if my neighbor's tree comes onto my property, as in the roots below me or the branches above me, I have the right to cut the branches and the roots. In your state, Unlike other states, there is an obligation to do so responsibly so as to not harm the tree. There's no indication here that you did anything irresponsibly. But that right that I have from hell to heaven is on my bank account. You cannot look at your neighbor and say, well, the tree's on your property so anything the tree does, um, you got to pay for. It's not, I know people think that. A lot of people think that. But that's not the law. 
You, you could cut those roots if they're lifting up your, your driveway, but that's on you, that's not on him. And if his roots are messing up your, your fence, your uh, brick wall, which I'm not sure you've proven, but okay, that would still be on you to take care of and not on him. And he can't turn around and sue you because you cut his branches or turn around and sue you for cutting the roots unless he has evidence that you did so in a way that was reckless to his tree, none of which he has. So you seem to think that because the tree that he did not give birth to, God gave birth to that tree, all right? That tree has roots and roots grow that that means he must pay for it. And he does not have to pay for it. He doesn't, that's just not the law. So you are free to repair the wall and you are free to repair the driveway, but you cannot pin the cost on him. He has zero responsibility for it. And if the brick wall that you then surveyed and now he doesn't even have a responsibility to maintain it because apparently your survey says it's all yours. So any maintenance of that wall is on you. And my verdict in this case is for the defendant. Well, the defendant is not liable at all. Mr. and Ms. Branch, let me ask you, what are you thinking about this? Are you surprised to hear the judge's verdict? Uh, yes, I am. But um, the only thing that really caused harm is that he, the way he carried on, you know, which even led to me even taking to the court for the first, for the first place. Because um, you know, had he not been so rude, that's unfortunate. had he not been so rude, it probably would have never even wind up in court. I'm sorry about that. I, I'm really sorry for you. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Fry, you see, did you know this or not? Yes, I looked up the laws of California and I submitted them all to the court. Unfortunately, you know, it's, it's, you don't want to sue your neighbor, man. But, you know, uh, things happen and it happened. And I'm sorry at the time I was going to try to take care of family in another state, you know, and money money is not said that. a lot when you live you know i've yeah. retired 17 years now you know it's all right but uh hopefully one day we'll wave at each other again so think I you can, can be say, friends you know? with your neighbors think think you can be friends with, I'm uh, friends the branches? with all Maybe. the neighbors on the block i know just about everybody on the block before even walking my dog or just talking to my neighbors yeah. you know i'm that type of person okay. good enough all right, that's what the judge's verdict is, and you are off the hook, sir. So let's see what the judges have to say. It seems like from this case and from so many others that you've heard, there's this general common misconception where people think, hey, this is my yard. If your branches are coming over into my yard and they fall on something, or if your roots are coming underneath my fence and pushing up my driveway, or even raising the foundation of my house and pushing my house up in the air, making it uneven, <laughs> They think, oh, well, you know, you need to take out your checkbook. You need to pay for it. You need to fix it. But that's not the law. Right. And, you know, the defendant was getting all sidetracked on they need a permit. They need this. They need mm -hmm. that. I, I'm not sure that he's right about that. There are some. Oh, you mean for cutting the roots? Right. Just because it's um, a sycamore. I mean, it, it, you I know. Those are city by city, mostly those ordinances. And in, in L.A. County, they may be protected, but that might mean if you replace, you can't tear them. You can't knock them down. Yeah, you can certainly yeah. cut the, right. the, the the roots. Well, you I don't mean, have to have a team of experts if you trim them or stuff no, like that no, that's uh, silly. on hand. But these sycamores, they're, they're really beautiful trees. We have them in the Northeast, I know uh, they have them in Central Park, but they live to be uh, up to 400 years old. No kidding. That's an old, that's about, our country's only 250 years old or thereabouts. So imagine that, how old some of them are. Uh, it's really uh, pretty uh, awe-inspiring. Yeah. So Jesse wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, how long have you and Doug Llewellyn known each other? Huh. 37 years. I cannot believe it, but it's 37 years. Television shows don't last that long. This is crazy. The thing about Doug is he looks the same. Me, we'll see you next time.